right, everybody, welcome back to another video. So the video I'm doing today is actually not about brewing, it's more about me. Um, I just figured I wanted to give you guys a little bit more information about who the man in front of and behind the camera is. If for some reason this is your first video of mine that you're watching, uh, first of all, welcome, but no. Second of all, that this is not the normal type of video for me. Uh, usually I do a grain to glass video, um, or I do other sort of informative and educational videos. Uh, uh, more regularly. So if that's your type of thing and you enjoy that sort of stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So normally when you, you meet new people, you tend to do some sort of like, here's a fun fact about me, icebreaker type thing, and usually I just go to, hey, I'm a home brewer and I make my own beer and I've been doing that sort of thing. I uh, can't really do that with a brewing crowd, so I figured instead of that I would give you guys uh, five things about me that are not related to brewing instead. Brewing just happens to be the hobby that I spend the most time on and I'm the most dedicated to, uh, but I have many others. The first of them that I'd like to talk about is that I am an avid mountain climber and backpacker. Ever since I was in the Boy Scouts a long time ago, I've always been into anything outdoorsy. That includes pretty much everything from hiking, backpacking, camping, mountaineering, trail running sometimes, and skiing and uh, snowshoeing, stuff like that. Uh, if it is outside, I probably am going to enjoy it. But of those things, I'm probably the most into actually just backpacking. Uh, pretty much two to three times a year I will dedicate a few days to go out to the White Mountains and backpack for a couple days at a time. Uh, usually it's by myself. So when I moved to New Hampshire several years ago, um, I started backpacking up in the White Mountains because uh, they're only like two hours away from me here in southern New Hampshire and I pretty much automatically fell in love with it. Uh, so I am like, for those of you who are in New Hampshire, I am 24 out of 48 on the 4,000 footers. Um, slowly working my way through that list, but for the most part I've just been enjoying it as, a, as an outlet to go out and do some multi-day trips. Uh, usually I do end up going by myself. I am kind of an introverted person and it's just a great way to uh, to just kind of decompress and de-stress. There's something about going out there and only having to worry about keeping yourself fed and hydrated and dry and warm. Um, and you know, those are your only priorities. The, the rest of the stress of life and work and everything kind of seems to fade away. Not to mention it's a beautiful area. For the longest time, it really has been kind of uh, a great way to stay both physically and also mentally healthy. So it also kind of led me into the second thing, which is photography. Um, I actually have been an amateur photographer for a while, um, but I started really getting into it when I started hiking. So I was bringing my camera set up with me and uh, trying to work on getting better at landscape shots and stuff like that. So um, I have kind of been a hobbyist photographer for longer than I've been doing most of the other hobbies. A while ago I got kind of a um, entry-level DSLR crop sensor Nikon D3400, um, which came with a couple kit lenses, and um, I just started taking pictures of stuff. Now it's Nowadays, it's not really anything that I really actively seek out. Um, I don't really like keep my camera on me all the time and, and look for compositions and stuff. But if like I'm in the right place at the right time and I have my camera with me, um, I will try to get a nice shot. Um, for the most part, I only shoot landscapes um, and I do a little bit of astrophotography as well. So I ended up actually throwing a couple extra lenses into my kit. I have a uh, 11 to 20 millimeter f2.8 that I love to use for landscapes. And then I have a 24 millimeter f1.4 manual focus lens uh, that I actually use for astrophotography. But it turns out that lens also makes a pretty good video lens. It lets in an absolute boatload of light. And every so often you will see a very narrow depth of field shot in some of my videos. That's when I'm using that lens actually. So it has come around a little bit. My photography skills not, did not really translate well into videography. I mean, that's because photography and videography are actually, there's some concepts that translate and some that don't. Um, I still have to learn a lot about videography. So the third thing um, is actually something that you guys have actually asked me questions about and noticed in the background of one of my videos. Uh, that is a trombone. Uh, so that is a Bach Stradivarius 42B uh, in the background there. I've played trombone on and off for about 16 years now, um, and it was probably at my best in college. Music has always been a phenomenal, uh, deep passion of mine for a long time. Uh, and I'm, over the last several years that I've been living in an apartment, I have been virtually unable to play that trombone without having some sort of mute in it, uh, which is just not the same experience. But um, throughout college, I played in pretty much every musical ensemble I could find. Uh, I played bass trombone in the jazz band, I played uh, principal trombone in the orchestra, and then I also played in some of the pits uh, for like some of the theater productions they had. I had a phenomenal time with it. Um, I had a great opportunity to learn a lot in college, and uh, 
actually ended up having a phenomenal opportunity to uh, to play in front of the orchestra playing a trombone concerto um, that I won a competition for. It was it was a great experience. Um, I've always had a massive passion for it, and it's actually something that uh, I intend to get back into. When I get back in, when I'm able to live in a place that is, <laughs> you know, where I'm not sharing a wall or a floor or a ceiling with somebody else, um, it'll be great to get back into playing a lot more, and I intend to do that. Um, and fun fact, actually, the trombone was my first foray into YouTube. Uh, so, way back when, in like high school and in uh, college, I would do a little fun thing where I would... Uh, record myself playing every single part of like a four or an eight part ensemble style piece um, and then I would layer those tracks on top of each other and you know kind of mix it a little bit um, and it ended up actually being pretty awesome uh, in some cases. I might get back into that later on if I, if I do get the space to play again. Um, I feel like I've learned a lot about how audio works uh, since that time, but uh, it's kind of a dream I have. Number four is that I have two jobs. Um, the first one is that I work as an engineer. Uh, I went to school for electrical engineering and I actually work uh, as a systems engineer at a defense contractor. Uh, for security reasons, I'm not really going to get into details on that one, um, so please don't ask me questions over that. Uh, but it has actually been pretty cool to see how my engineering background translates into brewing. So if you watch my videos for a long time, regardless of what the video covers, you'll notice that it always kind of has the same approach. The videos always have a very structured setup to them, and that's because I think that's my logical engineer brain kind of working my way through a project. Every time my videos pretty much follow the exact same format. It's like, what is the plan? What are we going to do? Okay, do the thing. How did it go? And then, okay, what were the results of, of the... Uh, Basically, I treat it like it's a science experiment. I think my favorite part of brewing in general is the design of the recipe, as well as the actual just like making it itself. Um, and I think that's the engineering part showing. <laughs> um, I've been working as an engineer for about five years now, and um, it's a good job. It's a challenging job. It's a rewarding profession. Um, but I'm starting to think I might actually want to switch into doing something different in the future. Um, I'm thinking about actually going and uh, becoming a teacher. I think it'd be really cool to uh, to be like a science teacher or something like that because I think it's a little more directly rewarding. Um, unfortunately, being an engineer in an office means that you very rarely get to see the actual result of your work. Uh, for the most part, you're just kind of solving problems or you know making improvements to things um, and you never really kind of get to see the fulfillment of that. Uh, and I'm kind of a big person that needs to see results on what I'm doing. And that's one of the reasons why this YouTube channel has been such an awesome thing for me, uh, because I've been able to directly see that I can help people. Um, so that's why I'm thinking I might make a move towards a different profession later on. So the fifth and final thing is something, again, that a lot of people have asked me about and they have probably picked up on either because I leave gear in the background of my videos or I've worn something or said a phrase that tip people off. Uh, but that is that I am, uh, in the Army National Guard, uh, that is what I fondly refer to as my second job. I commissioned out of college uh, as a 12 Alpha Engineer Officer into the Army National Guard. Uh, and right now I am in an M-Day or, or basically part-time status with that. What that means is on paper I'm active for about 38 days a year, but in reality it's a little bit more than that. Over the last year with COVID and with uh, social unrest and uh, all the stuff that's been going down, uh, we've had a lot to do, uh, so it's been interesting. But this is why I'm every so often beardless um, and why I end up getting haircuts pretty frequently. As an officer, I do a lot of the planning uh, and training development kind of stuff, which so I do a lot of work outside of drill. Uh, kind of adds on to the whole thing. I love being part of the military, I love being part of the National Guard because it has very unique mission sets. And I love just being able to do something completely different from the rest of my life.
my unit works with heavy construction equipment, so I'm uh, working with like excavators and bulldozers and rollers and stuff like that. So um, it's a lot of fun. It really is. I love my job and I love my soldiers um, and I love doing the stuff that I get to do. Uh, the Army really has had a phenomenal impact on making me the person that I am today uh, and being able to shape my life and uh, give me some really uh, important skills that I would have not otherwise developed. Hopefully that allows you guys to uh, relate to me a little bit better, I suppose, and understand a little bit more about who I am um, outside of brewing in general. Uh, but back to brewing next week. Anyway, thanks for watching, and as usual, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more brewing content. Um, I have, I've I've been trying to upload regularly on Friday mornings, uh, weekly. Um, and we'll see how long it lasts, but hopefully I can keep it up for a couple more weeks. But if you're interested in more content, go ahead and check out my Instagram. It's at the Apartment Brewer, as well as my Patreon, which I have linked in the description box down below. Also in the description box, I have a list of all of my like favorite home brewing equipment, the stuff that I do actually recommend, um, and uh, links to Amazon, where you can check that stuff out for yourself if you want to. Anyway, I will catch you guys next week with some more grain-to-glass content. So until then, cheers.